is Jesus. Hey guys. What's happening? It's Minister Tiffany. Here. And it's Ryan. And we're here to welcome you to another episode of Fresh Future TV. <laughs> We're the youth ministry at Fresh Start Christian Center, where the pastor is Apostle G. Morris Coleman. And we just want to remind you to subscribe, subscribe to our page. And then after this, after this, subscribe to Fresh Start's page as well. Yes. And today we're here to introduce you to a brand spanking new series. Oh my God. It's called Friends. Now, throughout our childhood, there were many things that we did as friends. Went outside. We played tag. Went to each other's houses. We called each other on the phone. We made friendship bracelets. We wore matching outfits. Matching outfits. <laughs> <laughs> Guess what else we did? What else? We made up dances, like. Wait, ooh, 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 ooh. Goes on. And there were even a bunch of television shows that we would watch that had some strange friends like Will and Jazz. Like DJ and Kimmy. Like Lionel and Lanny. Like Tommy, Chucky, Phil, and Lil. Ah, what about Arnold and Gerald? Or Laura and Maxine. Yeah. And, and Tamara. Tamara. We could go on and on there too, but guess what? The Bible tells us about some pretty awesome things about friendship and hmm. the types of friendships that we should have. Wow. There are even some amazing examples that we'll be teaching you guys over the next few weeks. So, before we get started, we actually have a challenge for you. Challenge! All right, and what that challenge is, is if your best friend is not watching with you in the comment section right now, we want you to go ahead and text them mm -hmm. or call them uh -huh. or DM them, message them, whatever it is that you have to do, do all the things all the so that they can go ahead and watch with you. I mean, our best friends should be followers of Christ too, right? Okay. And what better way, what better way to draw closer to one another than to draw closer to God? Together. Together. Right? And besties that pray together stay together. Stay so together. let's make it happen and we can't wait to get started with you. Fresh Future, here are your expectations. Love others. Open your heart, ears, and mind. Visualize yourself in the lesson and scripture. And lastly, engage in what's happening. Before we get started with today's lesson, let's go to God in prayer. Father, we thank you for who you are. We thank you for this day and that we have another opportunity to learn more about you through your word. We pray, Lord, for our hearts to be open, for our minds to be open and alert to hear whatever it is that you want to teach us today. We ask that you will bless our teachers, our youth leaders, our parents, our pastors, and everyone in this world who will be able to get to know you and your word through us. We pray that we will be the disciples that you called us to be. In Jesus' name, amen. scripture comes from Proverbs chapter 17 verse 17. A friend is always loyal and a brother is born to help in time of need. The word of the Lord is blessed. What's up guys? It's Mr. Ryan here. Y'all know what time it is?
guys, it's time for praise and worship. And before we even begin praise and worship, we need to understand how, how does that work? How do you get ready for praise and worship? You know what I do? I think about all the things that Jesus has done for me. I need everybody to do something real quick. Stop! Take your hand. Breath in your body, that's it. Huh? Thank you for it, okay? I need you to do one more thing for me. Put your hands up in the air like this and wave them around like you just don't care, like you're at a concert. Can you do that? Stop? Yes, if the answer is yes. That's a gift you got the activity of your life, all right? These are things to be thankful for. These are things to think about. Just like on your birthday or on Christmas and you get gifts, you're excited and you're thankful. Every day when you wake up in the morning, it's a gift. That is a gift. And guess who gave that to you? Jesus did it. Yes, he did. These are things to think about. These are things to get excited about. And what do you do with all that excitement? You say thank you, you are happy, you show your gratitude, and you show that you are grateful. Anytime you receive a gift, you show that you are grateful. And so now we are in a place where we can actively and fully participate in praise and worship. Now that we are thinking about all the things that Jesus has done for us, I want you to sing like no one is listening. I want you to dance like no one is watching. Don't break up. I want you to clap your hands. I want you to stomp your feet. Spin around in a circle if that's what you feel like doing. Don't break nothing. Don't worry about your neighbors. You don't worry about them any other time. Just like you tell people that you care about, that you love them, go ahead and do that same thing. Tell Jesus that you love him, how much you adore him, and how much he means to you. That's worship, all right? Let's have praise and worship.
God's story, David and Saul. So part of God's story is about two guys named David and Saul, and it begins like this. You may have heard of David before, the little shepherd boy who stood up to the massive warrior Goliath and won, but that isn't the whole story. In fact, that's really only a part of it. The rest of the story starts with a man named Saul. See, God wasn't very happy with Saul, Israel's first king. The people of Israel had begged God's prophet Samuel to give them a king so they could be more like other nations. God warned the Israelites they would regret it, but gave them Saul as their king. And like anyone, King Saul wasn't perfect and soon started to mess up, disobeying God and leading Israel away from him. And that's where our friend David comes in. God wanted a new king to replace Saul, so he sent Samuel to a man named Jesse. Jesse showed Samuel his eldest sons, big and strong men. Samuel thought for sure that one of these impressive boys was to be king, but God had other plans. God told Samuel to find another son, so Jesse brought in little David. Even though David was a little scrawny and had the smelly job of taking care of sheep, God told Samuel to look at more than his appearance. Samuel obeyed and anointed David, God's special way of choosing people. When David was anointed, the good spirit that had been helping Saul rule left him and was replaced with a new spirit that wouldn't leave him alone. Imagine there was a bee buzzing around in your brain that you couldn't do a thing about. That may be what it was like for Saul. Since Saul was going a little crazy, his servants had David, a great harp player, come to the palace and play music to calm the king. Now, one day, David came to bring his brothers, who were working as soldiers, some lunch. What started out as a lunch delivery soon turned into one of the most famous stories in the Bible, where tiny David took down the massive warrior Goliath with a single stone. After this, David was like a famous rock star. In fact, David was so popular that Saul worried people would start thinking David should be king instead. Saul began to try and kill, sending him on dangerous quests where any normal guy would have died and even threw a spear at his head once. Eventually, things got so bad that Jonathan, Saul's son, who David had become great friends with, helped David escape. David wandered for years trying to stay out of Saul's grasp. Twice, Saul even got so close that David had the opportunity to kill him. But David refused to kill the king in charge. David continued to flee from Saul for years, and without God's blessing, Saul's army was losing to the Philistines. Soon enough, Saul's army had been defeated. Jonathan had died, and the Philistines were now chasing them. Saul was so afraid of capture that he chose to fall on his own sword instead of letting the Philistines catch him. When David heard of Jonathan and Saul's death, he went out and avenged them. And with Saul dead, David returned to Israel and at last took his place as God's new king. And that's the story of David and Saul. So, in case you missed it, here's the quick version. God made Saul king. Saul disobeyed God. God said he would take the kingdom away from Saul and chose David. David became popular. Saul became fearful of David. David had to run away. David wandered for years. Saul died. David avenged Saul. David took over as Israel's chosen king. And that's a part of God's story. Whether good or bad, 
Therefore, we need to be careful to choose friends that help us behave in ways that please God. Let's see what the Bible says about this important topic. Proverbs 12 and 26 says, a good person takes advice from his friends, but an evil person is easily led to do wrong. Bad friendships can easily lead us astray. And this means that there is a resistance to guidance or discipline. It's when people lead us in the opposite direction of God's behavior. Now that's not the case for two people in the Bible who had an awesome friendship that is to be imitated and possibly duplicated. They demonstrated loyalty and sacrificial love. We are talking about, not ourselves, but Could we're be. talking about Jonathan and David. Jonathan and David. While serving King Saul, David became close friends with the king's son, Jonathan. Over time, David and Jonathan became as close as brothers. However, as David gained popularity with the people, King Saul grew a little jealous and he began to hate David and even plotted to kill him. Oh my God! Jonathan was caught in the middle of a terrible conflict between his best friend and his father. Let's check out this video. This is Jonathan. Hey! Who was the son of King Saul and a warrior in Israel's army. This is David. Hey. Who would later become the king of Israel. Huh? After David defeated a great giant, he was brought before King Saul and he met Jonathan. They immediately became friends. Yeah! And Jonathan made a pact with David and showed him that by giving David his robe and weapons. Oh, hang on. From that time on, David was successful in all he did. Uh! And King Saul became jealous of David and very angry. Uh. Saul wanted his servants and Jonathan to get rid of David. But because Jonathan loved his friend David, he warned David of what his father was planning. Oh, oh. Jonathan went to his father, King Saul, and talked him out of harming David. Mm. Okay. For a time, David was safe from King Saul's plans. Phew. But not long after, the king's jealousy and anger came back, and he tried to kill David. Whoa! David got away, and his friend Jonathan came to help him. I got it. Jonathan tried again to talk his father out of hurting David. No. But now King Saul was convinced he needed David to be gone. Jonathan was angry and sad that his father would not let his friend go. <sighs> and he knew that David would have to go into hiding and run from King Saul. Jonathan met David one last time, and the two cried and said their goodbyes. <laughs> Jonathan told David to go in peace, and that they had a special bond in God's name. Then David left and lived a life on the run from King Saul, and Jonathan returned to the town. Even though they were separated, the two were the best of friends and were an encouragement to one another. Yeah! So, Jonathan warned David that his father was looking for an opportunity to kill him, yikes. And Jonathan also reminded his father that David was a faithful servant and that he had no basis for wanting to kill him. It was completely unwarranted. And so, Saul listened to Jonathan and made an oath that he would not put David to death. However, 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 King Saul broke his promise not great. I think that we should even just fall right here. Promises are really important and it's always good to keep those, right? Um, it helps people to trust you. That was okay. like, we need a oh, picky promise. promise. Bye y'all. Bye y'all. <laughs> so in either case, he later attempted to kill David by pinning him to the wall with his spear. It doesn't sound like that was very nice, does it? 
It doesn't. Either case, Jonathan demonstrated his commitment to David by telling him that he would do anything he could to help him, even if it meant going against his father's wishes. Talk about a tough predicament. Sometimes our parents don't always make the best decision because they're not perfect, but we still have to honor them while remembering that God is our father and we should always follow his instructions. Jonathan asked David to show unfailing kindness to him and his family. Saul told his son that as long as David was alive, Jonathan's kingdom could not be established. But it wasn't about Jonathan's kingdom being established. It's about God's kingdom being established. Jonathan bravely followed God's will, but went back to serve at his father's side, saying to David, go in peace. We have promised by the Lord that we will be friends. We say, the Lord will be a witness between you and me and between our descendants forever. Then David left and Jonathan went back to town. Perhaps the sweetest piece of loyalty is revealed to us after Jonathan's death alongside his father, when a piece of the oath he and David swore was fulfilled as David took in Jonathan's crippled son as one of his own. Now that's true friendship. Question, should we be friends with unbelievers? What do you think? Proverbs 13, 20 says, whoever spends time with wise people will become wise, but whoever makes friends with fools will suffer. We should not completely turn our backs on those who are not Christians, but we should still be the salt and the light to those whom we come in contact with. This means that we use our wisdom when choosing friends, right? 1 Corinthians 15 and 33 says, do not be fooled. Bad friends will ruin good habits. We should care about people and what Jesus has done in our lives and what he's willing to do in their lives. Pray with them and for them without taking part in their negative behaviors. You see, godly friendships can last for an eternity and they should be cherished. Like Jonathan, we should be willing to make sacrifices, sacrifices. Mm -hmm, to help our friends whenever possible. True friends build each other up, build each other up. keep each other accountable, keep each other accountable, and are there through good times and bad times. Even in bad times. We have some questions for you to make sure you are paying attention to the lesson. Question number one. How did Jonathan first help David? That's right, Jonathan warned David that his father was looking for an opportunity to kill him. Oh my God! Question number two. Did King Saul keep his promise to Jonathan? No, no, no. He didn't. He, he did not. Still, he still tried to kill him. He tried to kill him. He pinned him to the wall he with a spear. To, with the spear. With a spear. Mm. Question number three. How did Jonathan demonstrate his commitment to David? 
Yep, Jonathan showed his commitment to David by saying that he would do anything for him, even if it meant going against his father's wishes. Question number four. What did Jonathan ask David to do for him? That's right. Jonathan asked David to show unfailing kindness to him and his family. Good job. Hey guys. Hey. Guess what time it is. Guess what time it is. It's time for your key takeaway. It's time. Key takeaway number one. That's it. Choose wisely. Choose wisely. Key takeaway number two. Honor God in your friendships. Huh? Honor God. Where? In your friendships. Okay. Honor God! Where? In your friendships! In your friendships! And key takeaway number three. Number three. Love unconditionally. Unconditionally. Let the love be unconditional. Let it be unconditional. Because that's how God loves us. Because that's how he loves us. Unconditional. Unconditional. Let's love. Let's love. And be friends. Say what? I have a question for you. A question. Are you saved? Do you know him? Do you know Jesus? Do you know the Lord? As your personal savior? Mm. Hmm. Questions that need answers. So there's two things you have to do. The first thing is, Declare with your mouth that Jesus is Lord. And the second thing is, believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead. Wait a minute, wait a minute. What happened? Let's do it together. Okay. I believe. I believe. In my heart. In my heart. That Jesus. That Jesus. Is Lord. Is Lord. He's the son of God. He's the son of God. Huh? Yeah. And Jesus. And Jesus. Was risen. He was risen. From the dead. From the dead. And you are now saved. Oh. Hop Shabbat! Okay. I'm in the back. Because city. you know, heaven is rejoicing. It's if rejoicing. one of you even said that prayer with hey! Yeah. Yeah. And we're rejoicing with you. Welcome to the family. Welcome. I ain't shame. I ain't ashamed. We're not. We're not ashamed of the to, gospel. To, to, to celebrate. Or run. You go ahead and jump. Run up for the kingdom. Hmm? Hmm? That's what we do. We're happy. For you. For you. For you. Welcome. Welcome. Fresh Future, let's pray. I am a king's kid. I am called by God to do good works. The word guides me and Holy Spirit teaches me. I will love God's people. I will be a disciple. I will make disciples. I will do your will. Send me, I'll go. In Jesus' name we pray, amen.